Welcome back folks. Happy New Year to you. Stock tech's done. Now to get stuck into the slot. Where do we even start? I think we'll just start with something easy. Pass load. Uh, there's plenty of pass loads out here so I'll do another one of these. This one. It's actually looking pretty clean. Don't think that needs a service. The filter's a bit grubby, but the front's all right. Starting up. The gas is in it. Test this one out. It works. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Blank firing. So that's the problem. She's running sometimes, but every now and again, she's shooting, but there's no nail coming out. You can tell by the sound, you can make a different sound whenever she shoots. A very sharp bang. That's because she's shooting the pan only, no nail coming out. So it actually makes a very sharp bang. So I suspect there must have been something wrong with it because this is very clean. You wouldn't leave it on for a service. I was looking that clean and dry. So it had to be in a problem, so that's most likely it. She's running, she's shooting, but sometimes doesn't put out a nail for blank fires. So strap her down, see what's wrong with it. That end should be okay. A little bit grubby, nothing too serious. This end again, a little bit dirty, but not too bad. Just going down, the pin's back. Potentially, it could be like the last one, where the pin had actually unscrewed from the piston. No, not this time. That's okay. So after that, we're going to the reed valve. Just lift that off in one piece. Keep it all together. Top cover is not loose or anything. Yeah. So we've got a grit on the valve itself. These two here aren't closing. To clean this out anyway, we already have the gun dismantled, so we'll also just wash the gun down, give it a wee service before we put it back together again. Same as the last one.
It's quite a hard build up there. Much better. That's her cleaned down, dried down, and everything re oiled again, and all the seals reset. I'm not bore, bore you with that, but she was already done one. And again, make sure you have a Loctite on these two screws. Plenty of it. You really don't want this to back out. Much better. That's another IM350 Plus up and running again. Quick wee service. The main problem was actually the reed valve wasn't seating up correctly, which causes the pan only to go so far back, not allowing the next nail to come up, causing it the blank fire. Sometimes it can be an intermittent problem, sometimes it can happen all the time. Check it out. If it happens to you, check that reed valve. That's the main thing. And the other one, like the last gun, make sure the pan hasn't unscrewed. That's her. Another one done. A Dewalt nail gun. 
is the DCN 692. Let's test her out and see what's wrong with it. It starts in a way. Same as always for the Dewalt, not firing. Just clicking instead of firing, but she's doing all the right things. Motor starting, it's tempting the fire, you can hear the click, but she's just not doing anything. So that's an axis, or at least nine times out of ten, it is the axis up inside. Find out for definitely point the pin. Normally, first thing to go is the axis. Another thing we can check before we start is just how many nails it's shot. Put over a single shot, hold the trigger for 10 seconds, and this light will start flashing. Every flash is a thousand nails. Count how many flashes, it'll tell you how many nails the gun shot. Right. 34. 34,000 nails. That gun is shot. Doesn't seem an awful lot, especially when they now need repaired. This axis isn't the cheapest thing to replace. But when you compare them to the likes of a pass load gun, because this doesn't take any gas, you're not out the extra money and gas. If this were a pass load and you had to buy gas for all 35,000 nails that you've shot, here in Ireland that works out to about 300 euro in gas. 35,000 nails is around 30 tons of gas. That's about 300 euro. So when you look at it that way, it's actually not that bad. So open up here now and see what we can do with it. Very easy working these, especially to get the pin out. Two screws, as most people will know when you're using these guns, they do jam up from time to time. You jam a nail, pull this lever to release the pin again. If it doesn't come back, you have to pull the pin out completely to free it up. So, pin, actually, springs as well. It's more money again. You can see there's a little bit of wear in the pin here, a bit of a shoulder, but that's just where the flywheel initially catches it. Back here, still plenty of meat. So the pin itself is okay, but those springs need to be changed. The part we need to replace is down inside of here. See that wee roller? That's part of the whole axis, which a solenoid is attached onto. That all needs to be changed out. What happens is, whatever's in that axis, it eventually starts to wear out and the tolerances get too much and it doesn't get the same compression down on top of the driver here. So this roller just doesn't get the same power. Whenever you initially shoot the gun, the solenoid pulls the roller back, pushes down the pin, the pin hooks onto the flywheel and gets thrown forward. For some reason, there's just no tolerance or no play no adjustment in that axis so whenever they wear out you have to replace it and it is the whole axis done these guns enough times tried replacing the roller on its own doesn't make that much of a difference it's the axis you have to change this wee belt clip watch the fingies as you're taking it off they are tight snap back on your finger you will know about it two torque screws at the front one long button head and on the magazine the rest then are all p10s around the body Not that bad. So on this Dewalt gun, this is the 692. Main thing to go on these guns. Number one, the axis. Once it starts clicking, like this one, you have to replace that. After that, obviously your springs, when they eventually break, you have to replace them. The pan, 
after so many times, maybe once or twice, replacing the axis. You then have to replace the pin when it starts clicking again. Switch. These switches don't give much bother at all. I think I've only ever replaced one controller in these things. The motor then can eventually go. Bearings will eventually go on it. Because the actual tackle, the magnetic pickup, is glued onto the frame of the motor, it's very difficult to get off without breaking it. Once it's broke, you can't repair it. So as the bearings go in the motor, once you hear it growling, making a lot of noise, you have to replace the motor unit. Maybe 50 to 100,000 nails, that'll go. Generally, if it goes, I don't consider it worth fixing. The gun's probably well worn out at that stage. But for the axis, it's a straightforward swap. Two screws on top. And these are tight. Screw the actual release mechanism is gone as well. Taking the axis out, I'm going to free out these wires to give you some play. They'll be quite stiff. Pull it back, twist it on the inside, and it'll slide out. We need to release the solenoid because that doesn't come with the new one. Price back the edge. So two e clips either side down on here. Just slides off. You want your spring? You want to keep your solenoid. That's the axis that you need to replace. That's gone. So this is the part you're after. That's your part number there. Type that onto Google. You'll get plenty of places selling them. So they're costing anywhere from £85 up to about €120. Euro. Type that number onto Google and you'll find plenty of places selling them. Come with the two wee countersunk screws as well. The one thing I would say if you are looking to buy one of these and replace it yourself, you'll see plenty of places selling them second hand. Do not buy a second hand one for obvious reasons. These eventually wear out. You can only get so many shots out of them. So a second hand one is going to be well used and will not last long. Invest your money right buy a new one you'll get the most time out of it and save yourself money in the long run so fit put your spring back on again these two notches here locate to here this goes back on that way squeeze it on line up your solenoid pan Squeeze it together. That's it. Just reinstall it now. Which can be a little tricky. Slide it forward and push it up. And slide it the full way forward then as you're pushing it up the way. Your screws are already preloaded with Loctite, just install the new ones.
Now you have these slide switches on. Do you actually need to take this board out? Just want to make sure these springs are still located correctly before you try to put them back in again. Before you try to reinstall the switches. So your mode selector. We'll begin on first. With this little leg sticking up. Your speed selector goes on this way, so it's on the top, and they just need to be slid on all together. That's it. Again, with the Swiss spring clamp, watch the fingers. One side's threaded, one side's not. Push this down so this bolt will go on. There's actually two wee springs and pins in the bottom lock it in position, push them down to get that bolt on. Now, lastly, place these springs. These Dewalt guns are good for the price. They're one of the cheapest guns you can buy if you already have Dewalt batteries especially. But, they're not perfect. They're not the best gun. Not great for sinking nails. Great up to about 75 mil, but after that and the 90s, it can be difficult to sink sometimes if you're into hard timber, if you hit knots or anything. But performance, they're good enough. Bump mode, especially very handy for putting on cladding or something. You can work very fast these types of gun. But you do need a lot of maintenance. They don't need a service, but parts wear out. When they wear out, they have to be replaced. Parts can cost quite a bit. So like of even just the springs, that's your part number there if you ever need them. These can cost about 25 to 28 euro. Just these springs. It's not an actual true spring. It's basically just thin gauge wire rope made into a spring. So they're not the best. That's what you have, a big long dangly spring and eventually they do break. When they break they don't take the pin back fully so the gun doesn't fire correctly. So if your gun's firing intermittently, everything else seems okay, it just won't seem to fire at times. That's the first thing to check, check that spring. If they're broken, replace it. They're very quick and easy to change. But like I say, the costs start going up once you start repairing them. Initially, they're a very good gun to buy, but over time, they do cost money. So they'll end up costing you the same as any other gun in the long run. But when you compare it to the likes of a pass load, where you have to buy gas, that's when they come onto their own. Not having to buy the gas saves you a lot of money in the long run. So if this thing shoots 100,000 nails, that's nearly a grand in gas you're saving. You can buy the gun again and repair it God knows how many times and you'll still be saving money. But with the new Milwaukee guns and especially the Hikoki ones which I prefer, they're a thing of the past to be honest. But now with newer guns on the market, likes the Hikoki gun which is more of a 
basically like a pneumatic nailer very trouble free and they last way longer so you get good time out of this but you have to keep getting it repaired a cookie gun will just seems to just keep on running continuously until it totally fails this one here you'll be repairing it quite a few more times before the high cookie gun but the high cookie most people don't have a cookie batteries or metabo http if you're in america because of that the cookie gun costs about eight or nine hundred euro to buy it's a bigger investment somebody already has d batteries and buy this for 450. you can see why people still buy them but in the long run nowadays i'd be recommend the cookie gun for these dewalts now they're a better more powerful gun and they just seem to last and run for longer the milwaukee gun as well also very good but Milwaukee gun repair wise isn't as good in that regard because not many people regas them and parts aren't all that great. They come as big assemblies instead of individual parts. The like Koki gun you can buy all the parts individually. That's why I prefer them. This should be us ready to go. Have a test here now. That's all ready to go, up and running again, firing like she should. Didn't replace this actual lock button, it's not a forward reverse thing, it's just a lock. Some people do actually take them out, so doesn't bother replacing it, just in case he's already removed it himself, because he didn't like it. So that there, axis, is going to be the main repair, and these Dewalt guns you're going to see. This is a wee bit more expensive because the springs were also gone. So all in all, that there is about a 200 euro repair just for that. So you're approaching half the price of the machine just to get it up and running again. But the other option is to just buy the machine again. That's going to cost you 450 and it's only going to do the same amount of nails for the same part will have to be replaced. So it's expensive, but you should get another 30,000 nails out of this gun now easily. That's it folks, that's how you fix the Dewalt DCN692 with the worn out axis and broken springs. Okay, next up, an older type Dewalt gun. This is the DCD616, the old NICAD battery. This has already been converted to lithium with the adapter. she fire no well, that's probably not gonna help no bolts no bolts at all actually none at the front and none at the back she's been held on by a piece of duct tape yeah maybe this can be fixed so we have two broken springs. The return spring in these older guns isn't a spring, it's actually a rubber band. Unlike the newer guns, these accesses on the older one never wore out. The problem with the old one is this here, driver unit. As this wears out, you can no longer fix it. Fairly fresh, it's not worn on at all, barely. Generally, it'll cut the whole way in before it'll actually be class is worn out. And as well, as your flywheel for throwing it, there's a solenoid down in here. If you open up the two halves of the gun, if this doesn't shoot, you've got a back up then. You can actually drop the solenoid down a little bit, two screws on either side. You can actually lower it, and that'll help it fire again. That's if the pun's totally worn out. This one here is fine. This should get away. It's just a new set of return bands.
very quick and easy to change these would be a consumable part they eventually wear out it's only made of rubber last two that's your part number there that's all they are two rubber bands for pulling this driver unit back down again very easy to install put the ball end and through your holder first put your spring in compress it grab that ball end and then just slide on this wee plastic stop that's one Two, refit your pan, and just reconnect the band onto your cradle. That's it. Drop on this wee spring. This wee leg. Your axis. find some bolts for this okay don't have the dewalt ones three makitas will have to do these are an m5 by 18 but you go to an m5 by 20 if you want let to make sure it works Nice one. That's her. Ready to shoot again. Take my battery. Give him back his adapter. Now, that's a common repair, but that's one of the only repairs you can really do in these guns now. Like I say, you can't buy that carrier on top anymore. Most of the parts for these DC616 and the DC618s, most of them are now obsolete. They won't realised people were going back to these guns and taking these out and getting them fixed up again instead of buying the new gun. The new guns are nowhere near as good as these things. By a long margin as well. These things were fantastic. These things last 10, 20 years easily. The new gun, getting what? A couple of years out of it, that's about it. And riddled with problems as well. These were extremely reliable. They won't realise that. So a lot of the main parts for it, they then pulled made obsolete you couldn't get them anymore so you've run out of options of these things now you can't get them fixed anymore once they go beyond a certain point once that carrier wears out can't replace it so basically a few return bands wee clips wee pieces here and there just to keep the gun going but once the actual firing mechanism is worn out that's it only option after that is to buy the newer gun or replace it for the different brand if you're replacing it i'd be going for the hikoki ones myself 
Now, next up for today, Makita SDS drill. This is the DHR242. Actually a 2021 machine, quite fresh. There's a problem straight away. I wonder if that's the main problem. It's not holding the butt. Tell that straight away because of this rubber cap. Cap is worn away and you can actually see the steel tool holder underneath. When that happens, the cap is actually pushed too far down. So it leaves the chuck in the open position. This wee rubber cap is actually pushed on too far now, which is all the way down. So the sleeve is fully open. And if you're unsure yourself, test it simply by pulling the cap off. Without the cap, it should lock in. It's still not right, mind you. It's locking in, but it doesn't feel just right. Anyway, cap will fix that. But is that the only problem? Hammering fine, that's all that's wrong with it. I'll just pull off that sleeve just in case there's anything else wrong with it. But normally that cap will cure it. And if you want you can order it online and get it, just clip it on. But if you don't replace it, no big odds. The sexual plastic sleeve is held on by the steel washer and C clip. So that won't come off anyway. Cap is just to protect the end. You can run it like that there if you want, but for what? Two or three euro? It's worth replacing the wee cap. These two pieces here, they're only for holding on this rubber cap. You need your three hands for this. Yeah. The problem with this Makita one, the older ones was just a round sleeve and that would just spin around, do nothing at all. These ones now have two flat edges on the tool holder. And the plastic sleeve also has two flat edges. Locates into here. And that allows the balls to work on this side. So they become free there. So in other words, if somebody gets confused thinking this is the same as the old one and twists this. Or if it jams against the wall when you're drilling, this sleeve will actually take off and round out like it's done here. So this is round the whole way around now. So if this is sitting in the wrong position, it won't release or hold on to the drill bit. It'll keep coming out or it won't go on. So that's also faulty. Just watch that one. These cordless ones, this plastic sleeve is not meant to rotate. It just goes straight up and down. If it rotates around, it's going to cause trouble. So we'll replace that as well. We'll just give us a quick wee wash out. them. That's the part number if you're ever needing it. I have we got a cap. That's why they're not there. I haven't put them in yet. That's the cap there. That's the part number. And then an 8-8-8. Eight, eight one rubber cap.
these two parts are the main thing that goes wrong with this particular Makita drill. Sleeve and a rubber cap cost two or three euro a piece. One of the cheapest repairs you can do to an SDS drop and that's the main one that goes wrong with us. Now, I'll point out a few things at the end that I like and don't like about this drill but I'll get this fixed up here first. So always a wee bit of grease. Metal ring on top. And your plastic sleeve. There's a rubber washer first, then your steel washer, and your big C clip. Make sure that slides all the way down. And this metal ring then with the two flat edges. Make sure you've got a rounded side and a hollow side. The rounded side faces up. Put that on and then your C clip, the smaller C clip goes on top of this. And lastly cap goes on top. The cap can spin, your sleeve should not. And you shouldn't be able to see the tool holder underneath through that cap. When it's on, the sleeve should have plenty of room to travel. So whenever it's on too far, when it wears out, that cap moves down and leaves the tool holder sleeve sitting in the open position. If your butt won't stay in, just replace that cap, and if you're in a pinch, just take it off completely. You can keep working until the new one comes. Now, so this particular Makita drill, two things I really don't like about it all that much. Number one, the sound of it. Never liked the actual impact mechanism sound, but in saying that, loads of these units sold, and the actual gearbox is one of the most reliable there is on the market, to be honest. Likes the Dewalt, just as powerful, but the Dewalt's rattled with problems. A couple of years out of it, and you start getting problems. Pins breaking, pistons wearing out, gear grease drying out, not. They're good machines, but they do need regular repairs. These Makita ones, not so much. Seem to be seeing these running for years and years, till eventually the motor packs in completely. Gearbox gives very little trouble, even though it makes that horrible rattly sound when it's not under load. When it's running with a butt in it against a concrete wall, it just that sounds like a standard SDS drill. But I never like the sound of it. it, doesn't sound smooth out of the box. Now secondly, that's the change lever, the mode selector. Three modes. And most people never see the sticker on the top of the drill. It explains absolutely nothing. It's just a wee diagram tell you how to change the mode selector. Nobody ever looks at it. Everybody sees it. Nobody pays attention. What it actually means is you can only change one mode at a time. As in, when you're in drill mode, you cannot go to hammer only mode. You have to go one mode at a time. Change one, pull the trigger, then go to the next one bit of a handling. To me that's a wee bit of a design flaw to be honest. It really should be able to change straight around. But I know myself from doing these repairs if you change two modes in one go you can actually pop off this change lever. You can mess up the mechanism you can actually pop off this change lever itself. It'll actually break the mount inside. So if that happens you have to replace the actual knob itself. But to avoid it all you have to do is change one at a time. To me, that's a wee bit of a design mistake, but it's not that big a deal. They've just got around it by putting a sticker on. But the sticker, in fairness, does not really explain the importance of changing one setting at a time. So every time you change a mode, you have to pull the trigger. And that keeps it running smooth and changing smoothly. 
you change two at a time you can feel there's resistance there it's not right everything else slides no problem but there's just resistance when you try to change two and one go other than that this is the main problem only other main things you see in them is maybe the odd switch that's easy enough replaced cheap enough as well and another one would be the field field burning out from being overused or the actual contacts burning up as well on it there's actual three spade connectors that hook up the motor itself to the controller they can because it's an sds drill vibrate an awful lot they can start to arc and break up and actually become loose if that happens you have to replace the connectors or solder them on permanently or change the field don't really like spade connectors but they're there for a reason it's because you can actually replace the stator the field on its own in this machine without replacing everything else inside don't have to buy the controller the rotor or all that wiring you can just buy the stator on its own you can't do that easily if it's soldered in permanently so that's why they have spade connectors but that's the way it needs to be if you want to have a machine that's repairable you want to be able to replace the stator on its own you have to have it as spade connectors but in saying that very seldom do you ever have to make that repair it only comes up a few times overall the wee makita sds drill dhr 242 good machine i have to say brilliant little machine for all the money that it is and all the size that it is good powerful hammer out of it good reliable motor performance performance and ease of use brilliant wee machine on par with the dewalt one without all the same problems as the dewalt less parts breaking this and you just get a lot longer out of it this particular one is 2021 it's 2024 now and that's the first problem it's had 10 euro repair and she's up and running again that's her and last up today we have a makita drill this is the dhp 458 this is the older heavy duty makita drill the brushed motor it's working that's the problem chuck totally jammed right Let's see if we can fix this up right see if we can change this I've done loads of videos on shorts changing these chucks I'm not sure if I've ever done an actual full length video so here's a full length one changing a chuck on a Makita drill or any drill that has a screwed on chuck with a bolt in the middle of it change it first thing put it onto low speed so where it's running slowest Secondly, make sure it's on drill mode, not hammer mode, not screw mode, has to be drill. So in screw mode it's going to be on the clutch, the chuck's just going to spin around. Make sure it's on drill. Next thing, let's take your screw out of the centre. The screw in the middle is a left hand thread, so screw it as if you're tightening it up. And these are generally very tight, and there's normally crap jammed onto the actual screw head so rub your screwdriver back and forth to clear out the head and then bear down and turn the screw they're normally filled with loctite so they're quite tough to get out and if you don't bear down or push down enough on them strip out the head it makes it very difficult difficult to get out them next thing an allen key big 10 mil allen key but you need it to lock into the chuck and this one's not doing squat so that's a problem 10 mil is not going to work your chuck won't actually close onto your allen key get yourself a 12 mil instead 
This is actually too big, but you can beat it on. Just look inside the chuck and find your three jaws. And locate your flat end on the Allen key to one of the jaws. Line it up and just beat it on. You get a good hold. And a big hammer. Easiest way to do this is sit it on the bench like this, have it down flat. Have your Allen key just sitting at a slight angle, just off the bench. You don't want it sitting up too high. You just want it sitting round about there. Take a good straight swing, straight down on top. If that doesn't work, you can't hold it in your hand. If you miss, you're more inclined for this hammer to swing around, hit you in the knee or something. Hopefully this will come off. Give her a couple of wee swings. If it won't come off, if it's too tight, you may have to cut it off. Just depends on how tight it is on the spindle. There we go. One chuck off. And like I say, that doesn't want to come off. If it's too tight and it just will not budge, don't keep slapping it. Try a few times and if it doesn't go, cut it off instead. Cut it off, you probably see in other videos of mine or in shorts. You're only cutting it off to the top of the spindle. So I don't know how much to cut off. Take a screwdriver or something long and pointy. Stick it under the chuck. There's a wee tipper to the head of the screw to sit onto. Just rub it down. Just feel for that taper and measure to the bottom of it. So you just measure that against your chuck and you'll just cut it there. Slice it straight through and you'll be left with the inside of the chuck and that shaft should be just exposed. Then you'd all you do then is you'd cut down sideways just through the edge of a bit of the thread. Cut through the thread a wee bit, but you cut all the way through the chuck. So once you slice down through, you'll start to see the threads. Make sure you cut all the way down through all of the threads. So the spindles actually split open then. There's nothing clamping it on. And a wee tap of the hammer will actually take off the remainder of the spindle. It'll do a little bit of damage to the threads, but not enough to actually destroy the spindle. You'll lose a wee bit of a clamping force, but threads still work perfectly because you're actually cutting through them all together with the old spindle. Once you unscrew it, threads will be repaired. Get yourself a replacement chuck. Expand as much as you want, be as fancy as you want. This is just a generic steel chuck. It's not a Rome chuck or anything like that there. You pay extra for them if you want. But I never really seen the advantage to be honest. Light it on the high speed. And because this has an actual hex end on it, you sometimes get a spanner just to hold it, to slam it on the place and lock it on. Open your chuck again, drop on your screw, and she's left hand thread, so screw it as if you're taking it out, it'll actually tighten it on. Sir. Now, 
seems very violent beating it off with an actual hammer that is the tried and tested way of removing a chuck allen key low speed drill mode give her a slap with that screw removed that should take your chuck off doesn't work for every drill mind you your makita ones the big heavy duty ones four eight ones and the likes they have a center screw on them but they're also they also use loctite so they are they are on very very tight then your dewalt ones if you look inside you won't see a screw you'll see like a wee hex or a torque head that's actually nothing there's no screw on it they're just torqued on and the milwaukee ones they have a screw in them as well but again torqued on if you keep wailing on them and slapping on them drills you can't damage the gearbox the makita one's not going to budge the dewalt one is not going to budge you will have to cut them off the milwaukee one you might get it off you might not but the gearbox is very very weak you'll actually snap it in half if you keep slapping on it i know myself i've actually broke them in half before the milwaukee one i would recommend just cutting it off not hammering on it at all most other ones you're fine giving a good few slaps to see if it comes loose if it doesn't work it seems too tight you just kind of get at the budge cut it off that's the safest way that goes for any chuck for any drill but any drills that have no screw in them you're going to have to cut them off anyway that's all i have for you today We'll get my few more repairs on tomorrow. See if we make another video then. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Give us a like and a follow if you're enjoying the videos, and we subscribe there as well if you want notifications when they're posted. Thanks again. Cheers.